Hi, welcome to another video on my modeling channel. Today I would like to build this 1 to 7 second scale model of a Soviet T-34 tank from Zvezda. This model was the first tank from this company in this scale, so let's see what they gave us almost 11 years ago. In a similar manner to the Su-85 from a previous video, all the main components of the vehicle are placed on one big sprue. In this case, however, we get two identical sprues for left and the right track. And finally the lower hull, which is molded as a single piece. In the box there are also decals with markings for two vehicles, and of course instructions of assembling the model kit with painting schemes on the last page. Here you can have a closer look at the details on the model, which are very good. Even welds are replicated, which is not a very common thing in this scale. For this model I also bought some aftermarket stuff, like this set of photo etched parts, those two resin conversion sets from Colibri, and this metal gun barrel from Aber. The last aftermarket thing I bought was this decal set for various T-34s from Colibri. I'll try to make this one. I started working on this model from the lower hull, where I removed sprue remainings and those extensions, which would get in the way later during attaching photo etched fenders. I'm converting this T-34 into a slightly later variant, and because of that I have to replace wheels from the kit with a later stamped type. For this purpose I used some leftover Su-85 wheels from my previous project and to add some variety I mixed in some resin wheels from OKB Grigorov. Here you can see difference between kit wheel and its aftermarket replacement. Those two pieces replicate the same type of wheel, but the one from OKB has much better and correct detail. And here I have completed wheels for both sides of the vehicle. The trucks in this model come in sections rather than single long parts we could see in Su-85, which makes their assembly more complicated. I started assembling the trucks by adding shorter pieces to idler and sprocket wheels and then linking them with the long sections. You need to pay attention during this process because in this model it's possible to make two identical trucks, which will make it impossible to attach it to one of the sides. I think the only significant problem with those trucks are the gaps in visible places, but they can be easily filled with some putty. To make the truck sections easily removable from the hull, I drill out their mounting points. This way it will be easier to disassemble the running gear from the hull for easier painting. To complete the running gear of the vehicle I attach the wheels. To secure everything from falling apart, I glue the wheels to the tracks using CA glue. 
Then I push the track towards a flat surface to make sure that everything is aligned. I also glue the upper section of the track to the wheels to make sure that it won't be levitating. Last parts left to be added to the running gear are those halves of the sprocket and idler wheel. The final result of this process are those two running gear sections, which will make painting and weathering much easier. Now I can move on to the upper hull of the vehicle. I start by removing plastic fenders to replace them with photo etched ones. Using photo etched fenders have many benefits, like in scale thickness and it's easier to replicate battle damage on them. At this stage I need to make sure to remove plastic fenders completely, but at the same time I need to avoid damaging the part too much. Here's how the part looks without the fenders. The next thing I'm going to change are those air intakes, which I'm going to replace with photo etched details. To drill out those air intakes, I use an electric drill and I simply drill out one hole next to the other, which I will later join up using a hobby knife and then sand down using a file. In case of this rear bigger air intake, I've decided that it will be easier to just remove the detail and replace it with photo etched parts, without any need of drilling. For this purpose I once again used my electric tool, but this time with a sanding tip. But there were still some adjustments which I had to do with a file. After that I used Mr. Cement S to smoothen the surface and to remove all the plastic dust which was created during sanding. To glue the photo etched part to the model I used super glue and I just place it and spread it on the surface of the model. Earlier on I've drilled a small hole to help me position the photo etched part on the model. Positioning of the second part is also not so easy, because I need to be very precise to avoid spilling superglue between photo etched mesh. But even if I do add a little bit too much superglue, I still can save the situation using the bonder. The bonder is very useful if you work a lot with photo etched parts. It allows you to remove all the unwanted superglue, even if it's already solid. One of the biggest downsides of the model are solid exhaust pipes, which need to be drilled out, but it's not a big problem. First, I drill out holes using a very small drill bit inside a hand drill. And after that I make those bigger using a bigger drill bit inside an electric tool. The final result is pretty convincing in my opinion. After that I use some 0.5mm plastic strips to hide those gaps in the side armor. The protruding plastic is removed with a hobby knife. Upper and lower hull fits together like a glow, so I've decided to glue them together and move on to adding smaller details. 
Like those towing hooks, which are so small and have such a tight fit that I had to spend a long time searching for them on my knees before I figured out a correct way to attach them. The kit was designed as a snap together kit, which means that it can be assembled without a drop of glue. But this means that some details have a very tight fit, like those tow hooks, which means that it can take a while to correctly position them. Another detail that required some drilling was this headlight. And finally, it's time to attach those air intakes. The photo etched set which I bought was designed for a different kit which had a different dimensions and because of that the air intakes on the top of the hull couldn't be replaced with photo etched parts. A reference photo of the vehicle I'm making shows that it was missing front section of the left fender so I decided to replicate this detail. I also added some damage to the right fender. Another interesting detail observed on the reference photo is complete lack of grab handles on the hull of the vehicle, which means that it was most probably produced in 1942. Vehicles from 1942 very rarely had the antenna mount on the right side of the hull, so I filled it up. Here on the photo you can see that the vehicle was equipped with a horn, so I sourced this part from Dragon T-34 model. Now I can start assembling the turret of the vehicle. Apart from removing the pieces from the spruce, I also had to remove all the detail from the turret of the tank, because it will be replaced with Colibri parts. To attach the characteristic cupola for the commander, I had to enlarge left turret hatch. Parts from Colibri have very nice detail, but removing turret cupola from its sprue was a very hard task and it can be easily damaged in this process. But the result is worth the effort. This is a very nice addition for Zvezda T-34, but it can be also used for different manufacturers like Dragon. Because the part is from resin, I also use super glue to attach it to the model. Removing of other parts from the spruce is much easier. Initially, I planned on placing both turret hatches open, but later I decided to abandon this idea. But because the commander's cupola have a very nice interior details, I just couldn't help myself to leave the commander's hatch open. But it still requires some work. The hinges on the commander's cupola need to be sanded a little to fit the hatch doors. But apart from that, there are no other problems with assembling the cupola. The periscopes are taken from the same set I've made resin copy of earlier to source some periscopes for my Su-85. After some intense sanding they can be added to the roof of the turret. The mechanism that holds turret in place is not needed in my case, so I modify the part a little. The main problem with this part is that if you install it according to the instructions, unmodified, it will be impossible for you to remove the turret from the model later.
The gun mountlet on this model also requires some work, not only because I'm going to change the barrel for a metal one, but also because it's fairly simplified. To install the aftermarket barrel correctly, I first gently remove the original plastic one using a razor blade. Next, I have to drill out a hole for the new gun barrel exactly in the same place where the older one was. Now I can attach the aftermarket gun barrel using super glue. I can also check if the gun barrel is correct length using the older plastic one. All the excess super glue can be easily removed using the bonder. Now I can proceed to assembling the whole gun mountlet and attaching it to the turret. I of course secure it with glue. I also remove the pistol port from back of the turret because it looks bad. Originally I wanted to make it opened, so I drilled out a hole for it, but later I abandoned this idea and made it closed. I also removed the weld detail on the turret because it's barely noticeable and I want to make it more pronounced. To recreate the cast texture on the turret I use Mr. Surfacer 1000 and I add a few drops of black paint into it. The black paint was added to make it easier to tell the difference between textured part and the grey plastic. I also applied this cast texture on the whole gun mount. As I said earlier, the gun mountlet is pretty simplified and it lacks few details, so I have to make it myself. I start by scraping on some detail on the front plate of the gun mountlet. Next I mix some two part epoxy putty from Tamiya to replicate the welds on the turret and mountlet. I use my modeling blade to make the texture on the welds. Those two small details near the mountlet were missing, so I recreated them using plastic. Those bolts on the mountlet were destroyed, so I replaced them with photo etched ones from Aber. Next I started measuring the correct position of the turret grab handles. For this purpose I've used a ruler and 1 to 7 second scale plans of the vehicle. After I located the correct places, I've drilled out holes using 0.5mm drill. The photo etched detail set includes parts that allows me to create the early type of the grab handles. The last part which I need to add to finish those is the copper wire which I cut to correct length. The process of making a cover for the pistol port on the rear of the turret was very easy. I just took a section of plastic rod and placed it in my hand drill and then sanded it into the shape using a file. This way I achieved a pretty convincing result. Because the vehicle carries many late type features, I've decided to add mountings for the fuel drums. But I also decided to leave them empty to make the model look more interesting. Another small detail that can be added using copper wire is this electric cable for the headlight. On the reference photo showing this vehicle, we can see a towing line attached to the side. This is not a typical T-34 towing line, but rather something like Sturmgeschütz used to have. 
For this purpose I'm using a Sturmgeschütz free towing line from Eureka X6L, which is an excellent product. Gaps between the hull and exhaust covers were filled using Tamiya epoxy putty. The whole machine gun cover should have a hole right in the place where the sprue joint is, so I need to remove it and drill it out. While comparing my turret to a resin one from a different model, I've noticed that it lacks holes for coaxial machine gun and gun sight, so I also had to drill them out. These are the last modifications which had to be done to the turret. Also the hole is almost finished. All that's left to add is some stowage, and for this purpose I've used some tracks from the set and some strips from photo etched set. I of course also added a chest and some spare ice cleats on the fender, but I unfortunately lost the video of adding those to the model. Ok, so here's how the finished model looks. I know that this video was meant to be about finishing the C85, because there are still some minor adjustments which needs to be done, but the paints which I ordered for the C85 to finish the weathering haven't arrived yet, so I decided to pick up a similar subject, and this T34 came in hand, so I decided to build this model instead. I would like to thank you very much for watching my video, uh, if you are interested in my works then I've made myself a page on Instagram, a link to which will be in the description of this video. Uh, the next video will be surely about painting this vehicle, so I hope you wait for it and see you then. Goodbye!